So one of the main topics for ABA part three and just a clinical medical physicist, something you should know in your background are MU calculations. So what equation is this used for? Define OF and reference distances. Do you have to use TPR? Do you uh, define SC and how to measure it? How does it differ from SP? What is OA? How do you define WF, define TF, and how is inverse square law used? So this equation is used to determine the number of MUs for a treatment field for photons. Remember, photons and electrons have different equations. Photons are more involved, especially in the bottom of the equation, so they should be pretty easy to differentiate. Now, what is OF and the reference distances? So this stands for output factor. And I know some use decal, some use OF. It's important to know all the terminology just in case you get in a situation you may not exactly know the acronym, you still know the basis of what the MU calculation is. So you want to calibrate the LINAC with the SSD method and with a reference distance of 100 CM plus D max. So the SA, or you, I guess, could use the SAD method with a reference distance of 100 cm, which is more common. And then the TAR, the tissue air ratio outputs, you would use a buildup cap. So do you have to use TPR? And so that, in this equation, we have TPR here, but you don't need TPR. You can use PDD, you can use TPR, you can use TMR, the max ratio, or you could use TAR. So you do have different options. And depending on what you choose, it will change some of the other factors within your equation. Just know how to use those and that you can use whichever one you prefer based on your clinic. So SC and SP. So SC here is the collimator scatter factor, which depends on the field size defined by the collimators. So this must be measured in air with a buildup cap at a reference distance, which typically is 100 cm. There is a difference, mind you, between a 10 by 20 field and a 20 by 10 field. And in fact, there's actually a difference of about 2% in scatter. So it's a decent amount, and that is why we have to have this scatter factor based on the size of the field and the jaws. And so... Be, and that mainly is because the, the 10 by 20 and the 20 by 10, there's different backscatter toward the MU chambers and that affects the output. So now the SP is the patient scatter factor. So we got the collimator scatter factor, which is SC, and we have the patient scatter factor, which is SP. So this depends on the effective field size on the patient, including the MLCs and skin flash. So you can't measure this because it's patient dependent. So there's no way you can measure that. And so what we can do is measure ultimately, we can measure the scatter and patient factor right off the bat. And then you can measure the scatter factor separately and then divide this out to get the patient scatter factor. So what you want to do is measure at a reference distance and a depth. Typically uh, for TPR, it's 100 cm plus 10 cm depth. You could also use a TMR if you want to just use a SAD of 100 and a depth at Dmax. And then a PD, if you want to use PDD, you could do 100 SSD plus Dmax. So those are those factors. O, A. So this is required when a point is off central axis. So this is our off axis point. So this is normalized. So all the points are normalized to the central axis dose. And this is needed because the beam is never perfectly flat, right? Even the beams that we really like, they may be somewhat, somewhat off. They're never perfectly flat. And so you have a separate data for open and wedged fields, and you just reference it to come up with your off axis ratio. If your calc point isn't on central axis, if it is, that is just one. So how do you define wedge factor? So this is needed for physical, dynamic, or universal wedges.
you the wedges attenuate the beam so there is a need to account for that attenuation and it's best if you calculate this for each field size and for each energy because that is going to depend on the attenuation in what products are created by interacting with that wedge so what is tf now so this is simply transmission factor so or some people call it tray factor, either one. So if something is placed in the beam, it is has to be accounted for. So it's a constant value based on the energy. So in case you have a tray in there, you can measure, okay, what is the transmission factor of that tray? And you can account for it right here. And then finally, inverse square law. If a point isn't at the reference distance, then we have to account for this. So for example, percent depth dose, and this matters if you're, you know, if you're using TPR, if you're using PDD, this is a factor that does change based on the actual output. And part two, you've done this a ton. So hopefully you know, but maybe just research it and be sure you're on top of it. So if you're using PDDs, then you can use an inverse square law of 100 divided by 100 plus D max. Now, that's if we have the SAD, if that's how it is. So if we're using PDDs, but we have, we're using the SSD method, then our inverse square law is just equal to one, which is really nice. So that is, in general, a brief description of photon MU calculations. If you have any questions, please comment below. But I strongly encourage you to do your research, know all these factors, know how they are used, and just be able to do an MU calc. And you should be able to answer any questions and prepare yourself well for the exam. If you have, again, any questions, comment below. Thank you for watching, and happy studying.